Okay, now we're going to go over the assignment three. Uh, you should have tried all the problems. You should check your answers already online. Here they are real quick. If you didn't get a chance to check them, um, you can pause it if you need more time to log in. But that'd be easier to just check them online. These are the answers on the back. And then, of course, problem 23. This is one version of the answer you could get, simplified. Units might be important if there's units involved in a problem. It's a good way to lose points on the AP test. So let's try these problems if you have trouble on them. Try and do these quicker, memorizing the values. So you really should have these values memorized. With the first quadrant of sine and cosine, they're the same values, but forwards and backwards. We're just doing degrees right now. Pretty soon we're gonna get into radians. And after this chapter, we'll probably always be radians, no more degrees, but we'll stick with degrees right now as you're getting comfortable. So, uh, first problem, snow calculator. In your head, can you envision that circle, All right? 90, 180, 270, and that's another 45. So the reference angle is 45 degrees, quadrant 4. Sine of 45 is root 2 over 2, and quadrant 4 it is negative. So got to become quick of these. Uh, this is reference angle is 30 degrees, quadrant 3. It's 30 degrees past 180. It's going to be sine over cosine. Uh, 30 degrees, 30 degrees. Uh, so sine of 30 degrees, it's that first angle. So sine starts at 0, 1 half. Cosine starts at 1, root 3 over 2. In quadrant 3, sine is negative and cosine is negative. So we get positive 1 over root 3 or positive root 3 over 3. Uh, cosecant is 1 over sine. Reference angle is 60 degrees past 180, quadrant 3. Uh, sine of 60 is 0, 1 half, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2. It is negative in quadrant 3. Flip it. Could rationalize the denominator. Negative 2, root 3 over 3. So you should be coming quick at these. Cosecant is 1 over sine. We're in quadrant 4. Reference angle is the angle it takes to get to 360 degrees. Again, if you need to draw the picture for a little while, so get the hang of this, 90, 180, 270, 300 leaves you with 60 degrees. That's where the triangle is. You shouldn't have to be drawing the triangle, though, for these common angles. You should just memorize them. It's just one chunk of values for sine and cosine, it's the same. So, uh, sine of 60 is 0, 1 half, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2. It is negative in quadrant 4. So we get negative 2, root 3 over 3. <clears throat> so, that's how you do it. Now, got to solve trig equations, same ideas but backwards. So now we used to draw triangles for all these, but if you get these common values, you should be thinking backwards. Okay, well, what would the reference angle be? First quadrant, when does sine equal one half? Zero, one half, zero, 30 degrees. So I memorized the values in order zero, one half, root two over two, root three over two, and one, and then I memorized the angles separately, which will help when we go to radians, zero, 30, 45, 60, 90. I memorize those two progressions separately. Um, so 30 degrees, quadrant one, and quadrant two. There's multiple answers. There are two quadrants where sine could be one half. You need all of them. So x equals quadrant one would be 30 degrees plus 360k, where k is an integer. I think it's OK to not write that part. Uh, x equals uh, quadrant 2 would be 180 minus alpha 150 plus 360k 
Then we just want the answers from 0 to 360. So that's just going to be 30 and 150 this time. But like I said, I want you to get in the habit of doing this right now because they're going to get more complicated even on this assignment. Okay, ignore the negative, just like on a calculator. What's alpha? Alpha ignores the negative. Quadrant one, which cosine is positive. Uh, cosine starts at one, root three of two is that first small angle, 30 degrees. We're in quadrants two and three. That's where cosine is negative. Imagine the graph, cosine curve. Okay, one positive, negative, negative, positive. Okay, so x equals quadrant 2 would be 180 minus alpha, 150, plus 360k. Uh, quadrant 3 would be uh, 180 plus alpha, 210, plus 360k. Draw the picture if you have to for right now, right? This is quadrant 2, you got to subtract alpha. Quadrant four, 3, you got to add alpha, right? We just want the answers from 0 to 360, so 150. And 210 degrees. Put the degree symbols on these. Okay, now this one's getting a little more complicated. We got to get the sine by itself. Isolate the trig. So sine x equals negative one half. So then we say, all right, what's alpha? Ignore the negative. Sine, what does angle of sine equal one half? The first quadrant is 0 to 90. 0, 1 half, 30 degrees. Where is it negative? Quadrant 3 and quadrant 4, right? Just imagine the sine curve. Positive, positive, negative, negative. Don't use any other tricks to memorize these. Just picture that curve. Okay, so <clears throat> x equals quadrant 3 would be 180 plus alpha, 210 plus 360k. And quadrant 4 is going to be 360 minus alpha, right? 360 minus alpha gives you the angle. So that's 330 plus 360k. We want all the answers from 0 to 360, so 210 and 330. You might think that's kind of a waste of time doing this plus 360K stuff, but it's going to pay off soon, very soon, even on this assignment. Problems 11, 12, and 13 will make it very obvious. Isolate the trig. you got to add root 3 to both sides. Divide both sides by 2. Minus cosine equal root 3 over 2. 1, right there of 2, 30 degrees. What quadrants is it positive? Quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So x equals quadrant 1 would be 30 degrees plus 360k. And quadrant 4 is going to be 360 minus alpha, 330 plus 360k. And then we just want the answer from 0 to 360 this time. So 30 and 330. All right. Now, we got a little trickier here. Got a little bit of a kind of polynomial looking thing. We've got a factor. So we're going to often factor with trig. GCF, always first thing to look for when you're factoring. So now, zero product property says you're going to set this equal to zero, and you're going to set this equal to zero. I usually do that in my head. Okay. Or at least, you know, like I say, oh, this equals zero, and then I start solving for sine x. Sine x equals negative one half. Now, when does x equal zero? That's a special case. At zero, 180, 360, zero plus 180k gives you all the places where it's zero. That's a special value of sine. It's not in certain quadrants. Now, this one right here, alpha equals, ignore the negative. Sine equals one half at 30 degrees. What quadrants is it? Quadrant three, quadrant four. So X equals uh, 210 plus 360K. And X equals 330 plus 360K. Now I just want all the answers from zero to 360. So zero, 180, 210, 330 and 360, all of those. Okay, here we go. You want to move everything to one side equal to zero before you factor. Otherwise, factoring just doesn't make any sense because we're trying to take advantage of zero product property. So think of this as like a polynomial, right? You're reverse foiling. You have two sine x and a sine x gives you two sine x squared. 
Uh, negative one here gives you negative two sine x, plus one here gives you positive one sine x, gives you negative sine x in the middle and negative one at the end. So here, sine x equals negative one half, and here, sine x equals one. Reference angle, ignore the negative, 30 degrees. What quadrants? But now look at the negative, three and four. So x equals 210 plus 360k, and x equals 330 plus 360k. Uh, sine x equals one is a very special case. Right here, look at your sine curve. It happens one time at 90 degrees, and then every 360k afterwards. So all of our answers are going to be 90, 210, and 330. Okay, all right, now we're gonna make it a little more interesting. We're gonna put some numbers on the inside, which we kind of, we just ignore at first. We say, okay, well, when does sine equal one? One, we just talked about that. And we keep the three X, so we say, all right, well, it equals one at 90 degrees plus 360K. But then we wanna get X by itself, so we divide everything, including the 360K. So now it's 30 plus 120K. Now all of the answers we want, 30, 150, 270, that's where the 360K is gonna to start to pay off. We're gonna be doing that a lot. Okay, alpha, when does cosine equal positive one half? One, root three over two, root two over two, one half, zero, 30, 45, 60 degrees. When is it negative? Quadrant two and quadrant three. So 4x equals quadrant 2, it's going to be 180 minus alpha 120 plus 360k. And quadrant 3 is going to be 180 plus alpha, so that's uh, 240 plus 360k. So then we want to get x by itself. We divide everything by 4, including plus 360k. And if you have it built into here, it makes it super easy. x equals 30 plus 90k. x equals 60 plus 90k. We want all the values between 0 and 360. 30, 60, 120, 150. 210, 240, 300, 330. There you go. Way easy if you've, if you've gotten into the routine of just writing this every single time. Okay, this one, got to isolate the single trig function. Negative one half. Reference angle is... You go with the negative, when does sine equal one half, first quadrant, zero, one half, zero, 30 degrees. But it is negative, so it's gonna be quadrant three, quadrant four. So two X equals, quadrant three is gonna be 210 plus 360K. And two X, quadrant four is gonna be 330 plus 360K. Divide by two. 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 105 plus 180k, and x equals 165 plus 180k, and all the answers. Now, usually we get two answers for most of these problems, right? As soon as you throw a 2 on the inside, that cuts the period in half, which means we're going to get double the amount of answers over the normal period because the period's now 180. So we're gonna get two answers for every period. Well, now we can fit two periods within 360 because we just got the period now. So you should know we're gonna get four answers here. And on the last problem, usually we get two, we're gonna get eight. And if you don't get eight, something's wrong. This one, three X, well, that's special value, only shows up once a period, but we'll divide the period by three. So we're getting three times as many. So 105, 165, 285, and 345. You should get four answers. You should know how many answers you're going to get. 
So if you leave one out, it's obvious. So those are all problems to do without a calculator. You gotta get really good and quick at these. We're gonna be shifting the radiance in. Now, uh, these are on our calculator. So left side's pretty quick and easy. We're in degree mode. Do sine of 28.7. There's that answer. Three decimal accuracy, 0 0.480 rounded truncated is the same answer. Next one, degrees, minute, seconds, which you don't have to know how to convert those. I mean, you could say, well, one, this is one over cosine. Now, one way to do it is to say, okay, this is one over cosine of 49 plus 32 over 60 plus 18 over 3,600. And you could do that as degrees, or you can just use your calculator. So either way, I mean, so we do one divided by cosine of 49 plus 32 over 60 plus 18 over 3600. That should work. Or make it a little easier yourself, one over cosine uh, 49, go to the angle menu, degrees, uh, 32, go to the angle menu, seconds or minutes, and then 18 seconds is on alpha plus. Same answer. You don't have to know how to convert them. You just need to know where to find them. 1.540 truncated or 1.541 if you really want to round, which I I kind of use a mistake because it's a harder mess of truncation. You just chop it off. Rounding people mess up. So this is going to be 1 divided by tangent of 72.8, 0 0.309 or 0 0.310. Okay, cosecant is one over sine. So I, I feel like it's worth writing this if that's your strategy. So one divided by sine of 32 degrees, 18 minutes and five seconds. So you can get quick at that. 1.871 round chunk, it comes out the same. All right, so those are the quick ones. Now these are solving, so we're doing what we're doing in the front, but. So we're going backwards trying to find angles. We expect to usually get like two answers, at least for each of these. And if there's a number on the inside, that's going to divide by the period by that, which is going to mean we're going to get that many more answers. If there was a two in here, we get double the answers, three, you get triple the normal amount of answers. We usually get two of all these. So we're going to say, all right, well, what's alpha? Alpha is the inverse sign of the positive version of it. Right, so second sign gives you inverse sine of 0.4. That gives you 23.578178. Now what quadrants are in when they sign negative three and four. So X equals quadrant three is gonna be 180 plus alpha. 203.5 degrees plus 360k. So I'm doing the same kind of strategy I did in front. And then quadrant four is going to be uh, 360 minus alpha. Plus 360k. So that represents all possible answers. We just want the answers between zero and 360. So two or 3.578 degrees, 336.421 degrees, 436.422 if you want to round. First one's the same, rounding or not. Secant is one over cosine. So I'm always taking everything back to sine and cosine. Then I don't, I don't need to memorize any other values. 
So then cosine x equals negative one third. So alpha equals inverse cosine of one third positive. So inverse cosine of one third is 70.528779. What quadrants are we in? We're in quadrants two and three. That's when cosine is negative. So quadrant two is going to be 180 minus alpha, 109.471. Point four seven one two two zero plus three sixty k, and quadrant three is going to be one eighty plus alpha, two fifty point five two eight seven seven nine plus 360k, so that represents all possible answers, but we just want the ones between zero and 360 this time. On your test, I could give you anything. You just gotta read the directions carefully. That one could be rounded to that. All right, so that's what we're doing. Now tangent, um, we can do alpha inverse tangent because our calculator will do this. Now we make it positive. So that gives us quadrant one. Otherwise you're, you're relying on your calculator giving you principal values. You gotta understand what it's gonna give you and then you gotta deal with that. I feel like it's easier to let my calculator find the reference angle, quadrant one, even if that's not what I'm looking for. Now, when is tangent negative? Well, when is sine over cosine negative? When is sine and cosine have different sides? Quadrant one, they're the same. Quadrant two, they have opposite sines. Quadrant three, they're both negative, so it turns out positive. Quadrant four, sine's a negative, cosine's plus. So those are the quadrants. Now, a tangent, cotangent, their period is only 180 degrees, so you, you really only need to find the first one and then do 180K instead of 360K, or you could do both and do plus 360K, but it's just a lot. Uh, so 180 minus <clears throat> alpha is 116.565051 plus 180k. So this gives you all the answers. We want the ones between zero and 360. So 116.565 degrees or add 180 to that. 296.565 degrees. Round truncated comes out the same. Okay, write the degree symbols. Okay, cosine. So we want to do alpha, which is going to be inverse cosine of positive 0.8 to get the reference angle. And then what quadrants are we in? We're in quadrant two and quadrant three, actually. But let's find the reference angle first. Inverse cosine of 0.8 should be between zero and 90. Otherwise you did not successfully find the reference angle. Okay, so quadrant two is gonna be, and we always use the alpha for this. Now X is the actual answer. So quadrant two is gonna be 180 minus alpha. So it's gonna be 143.130102 degrees plus 360K. And then quadrant three is going to be 180 plus alpha. So 216 plus 360K. Now we just want the answers between 0 and 360. Three decimal accuracy, rounded or truncated. <clears throat> I generally truncate, it's harder to mess up, but if you round, this is what you should get. First answer is the same. Cosecant is one over sine, so let's change this to a sine and cosine problem. So then sine x equals negative one fourth, alpha equals inverse sine of positive one fourth, but we're gonna be in quadrants three and four for our answers. So let's find alpha first, inverse sine, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25
14.477512. So quadrant three is going to be 180 plus that number. So 194.477512 plus 360K. And quadrant four is going to be 360 minus alpha. 14.4775129. So that's 345.522487 degrees plus 360K to get all the infinite possible answers. But we just want the ones between 0 and 360 this time. So 194.477. And 345.522. Now, if you rounded them, you get the same answer for the second one, but the first one would be 194.478. All right. So, problem 23, there's a lot of different ways you could do this. I think one of the easier ways, which actually can be done without a calculator, says a pendulum 40 inches long. Okay. That's how long it is. Swings. Pendulum's like something that's swinging. From the vertical, how much is the lower end of the pendulum lifted? So we're trying to find this right here. Now, one way you could do it is you could draw a parallel line here, and you'll notice that you have a rectangle. And you also have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if the hypotenuse is 40, then the short leg across from the small angle is 20, and the long leg is 20 root 3. The short leg times root 3 that goes from here to here which means that this length right here has to be 40 minus 20 root 3 and if that's what this one is then that's what this one is 40 minus 20 root 3 inches now of course you could use sine and cosine and all that um there are lots of other ways to do it i've seen people for instance uh, let's see, do it like this where they draw, extend this and draw a triangle here. And so you have a 30, a big 30, 40, big 30, 60, 90, and then a small 30, 60, 90, and then you can do similar triangles. You can say, well, this over this equals, uh, I don't know, this over this. <clears throat> this whole thing, this is 40 from here to here. And then this is 40 from here to here. So on the big 30, 60, 90, this is going to be, uh, that's, this one's going to be 40 divided by root 3, and then this is going to be 80 divided by root 3. I think I think the first way I did is simplest, but just showing you some other options. So we could say x over 40 equals uh, trying to think. Oh, this length right here would then be 80 root 3. 80 over 3 minus 40. So this over this equals this over this. Use that. Uh, I've seen some people do it like this, where they draw right triangles down here in the middle. We're trying to find this value right here. Say, so, well, this is 40, this is 40, this is 30, so this is 15, and this is 15. So these have to be uh, 75 and 75 degrees. But this is a right angle right here, so this has to be 15. And this is a right angle, so this has to be 75. And uh, so you could find this length. You could call x, and then you could find this length from that, call it z. So you can do a lot of sines, a lot of cosines. There's lots of different ways to do that. Anyways, if you simplify them all, <laughs> shall I come out to this now? Uh, you should put units. As far as the decimal answer, I don't know if I wrote that down. So 
Anyways, get creative. Okay, hopefully you're getting really good at trig.